Hi guys and welcome to this new video in which we will go through all new features of Framework 7 version 2 beta. Before we start, keep in mind that this video is basically just a short summary of the official blog post for those of you who prefer a screencast over reading text. If you want the full article, head over to blog.framework7.io and you can read it there. So let's dive into the new features. First, there's a new modular structure for all components, which means we get support for ESNext modules and UMD, which leads to the benefit of being able to selectively include only the components we need, as you can see in this example. Second, theming for iOS and material design has become a lot easier. Both themes are included in one single file, rather than having things separated. You can switch between both by setting the theme parameter to iOS or MD. If you leave it to Auto, Framework 7 will pick iOS theme for Apple devices and material design for all others. Also, there's no more difference in HTML structure between both. You will never had much to do to switch between the themes, but you might remember the issue of having a navbar in different places for iOS and Android. Well, this is completely gone and you can 100% recycle the same markup for both, which I think is a great relief. Third, there are no more separate color files. Instead, you pick the theme colors you want in the build script and the bundler will put only the color styles required into the final CSS file. Number four, HTML structures has been simplified a lot. For example, Look at the snippet from version 1, which was very verbose to the many classes required. Now in version 2, this is all gone and look at how much cleaner this is now. I love it. Number 5. New Toast Component. In version 1, you had to use a plugin that I wrote if you wanted the Toast notification displayed. While this worked quite well, it's annoying that you had to install a plugin just because of the UI component. Now in version 2, Toast is part of the co-components and has a lot more options, like for example, you can choose where it should be positioned and also opt to include buttons if you want to. Number 6. Reworked Router. This is a big one, guys. If you are used to view-based routing, the following will look familiar to you. Framework 7 version 2 now comes with a very similar routing system, which enables you to map routes to components by defining them like this. And then you can define an HTML file, very similar to view single page components, and put all your HTML, CSS and JavaScript there. Pretty cool! Also, the root API has been drastically simplified. Basically, only methods router.navigate and router.back remained. Next, tabs and modals have been changed, so every time they change or appear, they will push the state to the router history which means that pressing the browser back button will show a previously activated tab or hide modal windows. This isn't very consistent with native look and feel, but it's a feature which has been requested a lot, so I think that many people will be quite happy with this. So this was a quick tour through the biggest changes and features of Framework 7 version 2. I hope for a release this year. Plugins for Vue and React are still in the works and should be available soon. Same for the new APIs for Cordova, including support for splash screen, status bar and push notifications. To stay up to date, go visit blog.framework7.io for latest official news on Framework 7 and you can check for the current beta release of version 2 on GitHub. That's it. Thanks a lot for listening. If this video was helpful for you, please click on the like button and subscribe for more content. If you click on the little bell icon, you will get notified when a new video comes up. 